What's up guys, so today I'm going to be ranking the coasters at my home Cedar Fair Park, Dorney Park. That's right, the park that has not received an original coaster since 2005. Okay Cedar Fair, let's chat. Cedar Point and Kings Island can go a few years without a coaster. Give Dorney Park some love! And that's my Cedar Fair rant for the coaster. Bye bye! Now I do know that there was supposed to be a potential 2021 coaster for Dorney Park and the proposal or plans for that got retracted because of the pandemic or according to rumor, that's what I've heard. So probably not gonna be getting another coaster, at least not in 2021, so hopefully 2022 they'll be getting something new, but I just wish that Cedar Fair would invest a little bit more into Dorney Park. I think there's a lot of potential at this park that this is holding the park back. Cedar Fair, I'm watching you. Anyway, on to the rankings. So I'm not going to be including Woodstock Express, because it's a kiddie coaster, I have not written it, and even if I had written it, it would probably be at the bottom of the list. So, that aside, bottom of this list for sure, officially, is the Wild Mouse Coaster, because, I mean, it's a Wild Mouse Coaster. If you've seen my other ranking videos before, I'm not the biggest fan of Wild Mouse Coasters. I mean, this has a good spot in the parks as being a more family coaster, but besides that, all right, up next at number five is Thunderhawk, or when it opened back in 1924, it was called the Coaster. Coaster names sucked back in the day, didn't they? But the Coaster was renamed the Thunderhawk in 1989 when Dorney Park opened Hercules. So yeah, they took 65 years to realize that the Coaster was a stupid name. But anyways, the ride itself. For being a, almost a 100 year old ride, it's a pretty decent ride. It has a few rough spots in it, it ain't the smoothest coaster, but it's still fun for what it is, and it has a few good fun airtime moments. Not a lot of airtime compared to some other classic wooden coasters out there, but you still get some pretty decent floater airtime. This is definitely more of a front row coaster, more so than a back row. At least just from my personal experience, you get a little bit more airtime in the front row compared to back row on this ride. And I do believe that Ace, or American Coaster Enthusiast is going to name this an Ace Landmark this year. I mean, I'd say that's well deserved being almost 100 years old. All right, up next at number four would be Possessed. You will be possessed in three, two, one. Nice try. You didn't scare me. I really need to get a cage for that mini me or something. I don't know why it keeps popping up. So while Possessed may not be my favorite Intimate Impulse coaster, it's still a pretty fun ride and it feels a good gap for Dorney Park being a launching coaster. And I can't ever really decide which row is my favorite row in this ride because the front row is pretty cool going up the twisted spiral, but back row going up that straight spike, it's pretty aggressive going up that spike in the back row. Comment down below what your favorite row in this ride is. And every time that I've ridden the ride, the ride ops normally have some fun with the guests. Like they'll do a countdown like, you'll be possessed in three. Two. Or even better, they'll just be like, you'll be possessed. I don't know, I think it's just funny when the ride-ups just mess with the guests like that. All right, so the final three, Hydra, Steel Force, and Talon. These were pretty tough for me to rank because I've always loved all three of these coasters pretty equally. So I just had to pick out some minor issues with each of them and I kind of used that to, to determine my rankings for these rides. But first, coffee. Look, it's like 2 a.m. right now, and I've been up working since 5 a.m. today, so don't judge me. I need my coffee. All right, number three on my list would be Hydra the Revenge. So I've always loved Hydra, but I've found over the past few years that it's developed a little bit of a rattle to it, even in the front row with a full train, which is unfortunate because it has such a unique layout. There's no other floorless coaster out there that has a layout like this. The JoJo roll going out of the station is by far my favorite part of the ride. And while it may not be the tallest and fastest floorless coaster out there, I just think that the unique layout just makes this ride stand out. It has the back-to-back -back zero G rolls, it has that very oddly shaped Cobra roll. And I love at the very end of the ride, it does a little helix before going back into the station, but that helix is flying over where Hercules used to stand at. So pretty much the end of the ride is like the Hydra circling the corpse of its vanquished foe, the Hercules. It will feast upon the flesh of Hercules. It will pick its flesh from its teeth. Long live the Hydra! Okay, maybe I've had too much coffee. Said nobody ever. 
All right, so number two on my list would be Steel Force, and this coaster seems to get pretty mixed reviews among coaster enthusiasts. Some say that you get little to no airtime in this thing, some people say that it's an airtime machine. I fall more on the side that it's an airtime machine. Every single time I've ridden Steel Force, no matter where I've sat, on the front row, even the middle rows or back row, I still got pretty decent airtime in every single ride. If I had to pick a favorite seat for this one, I would say back row. So what's cool is when you crest the lift hill, it slowly creeps over the top of the hill. And even in the front rows, you're kind of dangling down the first drop and then suddenly boom, you're down. And in the back row, you get yeeted pretty good. And if the ride is running fast that day, like on a hot summer day and the train is full, you can pull some pretty decent positive Gs on the Helix. And the finale is very fun. You do multiple airtime hills, one after the other after the other. I always get a bunch of airtime at this moment, and I know there's a bunch of other coaster enthusiasts out there that don't get any airtime on this. And if that's the case for you, well, sorry for your luck. So yeah, Steel Force is just an overall very fun ride, and it's an excellent marquee attraction for Donya Park. All right, number one on my list would be Talon, the Grip of Fear. So this is by far the smoothest B&M invert that I've ever been on. It is such a glossy ride, and even when you're off the ride just watching it, you can just taste the smoothness. While it may not be the most forceful invert out there, it still has a pretty fun layout. So after the first drop, you go into a loop, then you go into a zero G roll, and then you go into a trench and then into an Immelman, and then you go into an overbank turn into a full circle. And this is a pretty fun element. It's like trying to be an inversion. It's not quite there, but it's still a pretty fun element. And this element kind of acts as the entrance for the ride itself. And what's cool about this ride is that the second half of the ride is more of a terrain layout. So after that overbank turn, do a little S-bend, then you go down a hill, then you go pretty low to the ground and into the corkscrew. And then as a cool finale, you do that tight helix that's very low to the ground. And this helix is one of the very first things that you see when you walk into the park. And even after this helix is like a little airtime hill too, which you don't see that too often on the B&M invert, but that's a cool little extra element that they threw in before you go into the brake run. And this ride's almost 20 years old. It opened in 2001. So I can't believe how smooth this thing runs for being as old as it is. So whatever Dorney Park is doing to maintain this ride, I hope that they keep doing it because they've done a phenomenal job maintaining talent. So there you have it guys. That's how I rank the coasters at my home Cedar Fair Park, Dorney Park. How would you guys rank these coasters? Comment down below. I would love to see how you guys would stack these rides at this very underrated park. And again, as I said in the beginning of this video, I really hope that Cedar Fair invests much more money into this park in the future because I think that there's so much potential for Dorney Park and Cedar Fair is just holding this park back. I just think it would be nice if they invest a few major attractions to this park and I think that this park could really take off. All right guys, I wrapped the video up here. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next loop. See you guys. The time has come. What the? I'm out of here.